For a person transitioning to a dementia unit, the relative's concern tends to be primarily cares and comfort. Now, in terms of cares, of course, the staff look after that in a dementia unit, but in terms of comfort, the relatives can help enormously with that for the dementia resident now in the dementia facility. Now, to go through that. Firstly, the comfortable chair, the most important item in the room aside from the bed. So bring in that chair that's the most comfortable for them, familiar, that they can relax in, get out of easily, and that works for them, and have it at the window, facing the view, sunlight coming in, so they can still enjoy the world from their comfortable chair view standpoint. Secondly, the bed. Make sure that it's all set up with warm sheets, duvet, bedding that's comfortable, warm and suitable for the dementia resident. Now, if the man is, say, if it's your father and he's six foot, six foot one and a big man, or even just a slim man at six foot or six foot one, these beds in dementia units are pretty tiny. They're made really for 80, 90 year old ladies, not big, strong, tall men. So you might want to bring in a longer bed and a wider bed than the one that's in place at the unit. Uh, but for other, el you know, for elderly women, generally the beds are suitable. The mattresses are usually decent. It's high low, so uh, it can be adjusted up and down. So that's always the advantage. But generally they just have cold cotton sheets and a thin little duvet without any wool or feathers in it. It's all cold and uncomfortable. Pillows all spongy, you know, rubbery fixture. And it will just give you a headache sleeping on it just for a night, let alone, a, you know, five years that some people have to endure in these places. So set it up with comfortable bedding that you know they liked beforehand. Just bring in the same bedding that they had from home. Just bring in the same pillows, sheets, duvet, the lot just in the one car load and then it's there. Put it on, put it, um, make up the bed with it yourself. Have a spare set of sheets which you can put in the wardrobe and explain to the carer where they are so that she knows that when the first lot of sheets go to the laundry, the other set of warm sheets, winter sheets, when it's winter, are there for you to put on. And you might even want to have a spare duvet cover um, because, you know, things can get spilt pretty quickly, tea, coffee, meals, the lot, over anything and everything. So you do need spare sets. Now, in terms of comfort for the surrounds, furniture that your parent is familiar with, bring that in, not new items or different items, same furniture so that they can orientate to that. So if they used to have having a little bedside table by their bed, Bring the same little bedside table in with the same little things in it. Don't tidy everything up. Put it in different places so they'll then have no idea where things are. Remembering still, they've got recent memory loss. They'll have lots of difficulty knowing where things are. Even with things being in the place they're used to having them. But more so, in a different environment they're not used to. And if everything's been sorted out and is all tidily in different places that they've got no idea where it is. It's just adds to the confusion, adds to the disorientation. So little bedside table by their bed, a chest of drawers, the ones they're used to in, you know, the nighties are here and the socks are here and whatever's here and there, same place. I mean, chances are they'll go in and rummage around and, you know, disrupt the whole process. But at least if it's along the lines of what they're used to, that's a great help. Now, in terms of other furniture in the room, there's probably not much room for anything else. <laughs> Very tiny, these rooms and dementia units. You might have a chance if you've got one chair, uh, you'll have room for a footstool. So that will be okay if your parent likes putting their feet up on a footstool. And then a little bedside table not a bedside table, a chair, a little table by their chair for magazines, coffee, you know, any little activity they're doing. So they like to have that. But yeah, maybe a lamp. That's actually really nice for comfort because lighting can be pretty harsh uh, in dementia units. Not much thought is 
given to nice lighting. So if there's a nice lamp that they can turn on at night to give a more neon low-key vibe, that's always a really good consideration. Now, staff are always aware of tripping hazards and the less around, the better. They prefer everything to be clean, bare and sterile. But it doesn't have to be like that. It's important that it's not like that because you want to get these reminiscing memories going and you want your parent to be comfortable. But at the same time, make sure that if they're on a walker, that there's enough space for them to easily manoeuvre with their walker and spend some time uh, positioning the um, furniture in the room so that it suits them and they've got plenty of space to move around and that there's no tripping hazards. So that does take a little bit of consideration. Everything takes consideration, uh, actually, but as long as it's safe and there's no tripping hazards, staff will be fine with that. So these are things to do to enable your parent to be comfortable in their room. I mean, some people think, oh, it's obvious all these step-by-step -step processes. Wouldn't anyone think of it? No, 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 they don't think of it, actually. That's why I'm doing all these videos and books and everything else. It's so often left that the person just goes into the dementia unit with, you know, nothing's considered. They're just left in the room with what the institution provides. Cold bedding, sterile bed, uncomfortable chair, small chest of drawers, cold, harsh, and that's it. That's what they have to put up with. And so, you know, you don't want that for your parent, not at all. So it is important that these things are considered and actioned on. All written about in detail in both books, Residence Voice and Residence Rise, especially the epilogues at the back of the Residence Voice. I've written a lot on these topics, how to, um, coming into a dementia unit and setting up the room, all that needs to be considered. Many more points need to be considered, all of which are in the Residence Voice. So on Amazon and in my website description below. So thank you for your viewing and likes. Um, please subscribe.